All right, I'm Scott. It's my 2013 Toyota Tacoma a V6. Um, tried making do an oil change video before, but it just uh, was like 30 something minutes. It was pretty much the whole oil change. So I'm gonna give you a little quick pointers. So if you decide to do it yourself, first thing you wanna do, make sure you get the right filter, make sure you get the right socket, um, a ratchet, a good oil pan, um, good filter, the proper one. Remember, if you go synthetic oil, you do synthetic oil filter. Um, just because the filter says that the miles are longer, doesn't mean you shouldn't change the oil as often. Um, what else? If you can, uh, if you get an opportunity and can have a couple of ramps, that makes the job a lot easier. Otherwise, you can still squeeze it out. Um, and that's about it. The big portion of the time is driving up, getting your supplies, driving back, then driving back up with the oil, and then disposing of it. Walmart automotive centers usually take the spare oil, but you got to bring the container back. So I'll quick show you what I got going on um, here. You can see my ramps, they're metal ones. The plastic ones work. I don't think they're as high over there. It's a wheel chuck. Once you put the wheels up on the ramp, you're gonna chalk the back of the wheel so it doesn't roll off the ramp while you're under it. Probably a good thing. All right, here we go. All right, so I use the synthetic. 5W30s recommended. Um, they recommend Toyota, but I have no problem with these. Um, your filter, obviously matching synthetic filter. I use the uh, 3614, which is recommended. Um, once I put the truck up on the, the ramps, I usually have a little step ladder, which helps me get up to the top to put the oil in. Drain pan. A filler funnel. This is optional, but a lot easier to use. Um, this particular one uh, is the 76 millimeter, which fits our filters. A metric 14 millimeter socket. I find the, the, the extension helps. Um, and of course my ratchet. You can use a breaker bar, but I find the ratchet prevents me from stripping anything. Um, you're gonna come up here. Obviously, you wanna know what to do. There's your filter in there. Now, if you needed to get to a filter, there's not a lot of room around here, um, so it's very difficult. There's your oil filler cap. When you're draining your oil, you're gonna come up here and you're gonna open that and that'll allow air to come in and more oil to drain. When you take off your filter, if you look down here, there's a hole. You want to get a soda bottle or something under that hole to catch the oil. Otherwise, when you drain, you pull the filter off, it'll run down and drip out. You could put a tube, but if you notice, your belts are directly under it. So, yeah, take a little extra care. As you can see, I've done my chalk block behind the rear wheel to prevent it from rolling back. Gives me a little extra ground clearance. And I'm gonna climb up underneath and show you what we're looking at. And then we'll get this started. All right, so gloves, eye protection. I've been told about that before. Um, cardboard helps to slide underneath. You're gonna come under the front of the truck. This is your skid plate. As you come underneath, you got your axle. This is the majority of the engine right up here. As you're looking up. So from here, this is a solid structure to each side of your tires. You're just slightly forward of the tires. And this is where your oil is. Now beyond it, if you look, there's another pan with a drain plug. That's your transmission. 
you don't want to open that up. You know it's your transmission because it's behind the wheels. You see? So your engine's in the front. It supplies power to your transmission, which drives your rear and, of course, your front tires. But the majority of it runs down your drive shaft. So directly under your engine is where your oil is going to drip down to and where it's going to pull the oil back up. So that's right where you're at. And again, I believe I have the right 14 millimeter socket and that's going to end up cinching up to here. See? You're going to position your oil drip pan directly underneath and you're just going to open it up. See if I can get a good spot for this. Alrighty. I think I got a good spot. So your oil drain plug is here. I'm going to position the oil pan underneath and we're going to open her up. At least that's the plan. Ah, oh, there you go. Can be a little stubborn at times. And that's it. So when you put it in, it's golden color. That's what you want to see when you're draining it. All right, let's go up top side. All right, back up top again. So I'm trying to speed this along so it's not a super long video. But just under here, you can see I've wedged in. Uh, it's actually a, a green tea bottle, a little thicker. I think it'll do a better job. But with the oil pan draining down below, we're gonna open up the oil fill. That'll allow oil to be sucked back down. Anytime you're putting tools on top of the engine, be careful. If you don't pick them up and you shut it, those tools can drop into the fan belts and damage things. So definitely be careful of that. We're going to take our oil wrench. And I really can't do this with one hand, but I'm going to show you as much as I can. You're going to wiggle that on there, and then that's going to rotate off. But like I said, I need both hands, so hold on. All right, it's loosened up a little bit, so we're going to try to bring this the rest of the way out. You can see it's already, it's already oozing and dripping down into there. And as you can see, that would be why you need to have that there. Alrighty. We're in a minute, as soon as I get this off. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing, because I can't see what I'm filming. But basically, here's your old filter. There's your socket. Here's your new filter. The biggest mistake people make is they screw the old filter right on. You can't do that. You have to have a seal. So, we're going to open up the new oil, try to, hopefully you can see it, so this is the new oil, and we're just going to squeeze the sides of it to get some on your finger, and you're just going to lube You're gonna lube this gasket here. Not a specific amount. Just wanna make sure everything's good and coated. This'll form a seal. You don't wanna use the wrench to tighten it because the wrench is gonna make it too tight. Typically, you take this time to clean everything up. Um, I'm gonna just 
put this on. Be careful, you don't want to cross thread it. Make sure it goes on nice and easy. And now you can remove your bottle. Hopefully you won't drop it. And that's a awful lot of oil to get all over everything, the ground, whatnot. Alrighty. Ooh. All right, back under the truck we are. You're gonna take that drain plug that's been sitting down here. Again, you can go through a whole roll of paper towels trying to make this as neat as possible. Gloves, you can go through a whole box of gloves. You know, just try to be as neat as you can. You don't want this stuff getting on the ground. And we're going to screw this back in. Again, you don't want this so dry and clean that you don't get a good seal. A little bit of wetness between parts can help seal. You do screw this down. There are torque pounds or whatever. Um, usually, that's all I do. And you can see how hard it was to get off earlier. So that's pretty much it. So, I'm gonna chuck that down there. Ooh. You can see my little oil pan's been draining everything into the bottom. There's, there's my uh, plug. Best to wipe that off, or not. You just don't want it dripping on the road. Now we're gonna go back out. All right, this is Got to follow me a little bit here, and I'm going to catch a little criticism, but it works. So here, got my oil filter and that bottle that I use to catch the oil from the oil filter. We're going to leave that draining. Meanwhile, our plug is in the bottom. We put our filter in the top. We're going to add our oil. Now, this is five. Oops, other side. This is five quarts. The truck manual says it takes something like with a filter change like a 5.2 5.4 quart here's the thing you can't get all the oil out of your engine it sticks in places it's in hoses it's in lines you're just not gonna do it so typically five quarts minus a finger full to lube and that's pretty much all you need. If I can do this without spilling everything everywhere. You see how there's a little bit of a, a play back and forth. That would be almost impossible to aim into that little neck. So you definitely need a, a filler. Thing is, you don't want, you don't want to use this for everything. If you have it for oil, use it for oil. Buy another funnel for your antifreeze. Buy another funnel for something else. Be gasoline in your lawnmower, whatever. Oil should be for oil. If you have different thicknesses, not that critical, unless you're gonna go do 20 oil changes in one day, but if you're going to use it, try to use oil for oil. Alrighty. We're almost done. I got flies crawling on me, ants crawling on me. Alrighty. A little bit of a pain in the butt. But as you can see, it doesn't take long. And with the funnel, you can load it up, let it drain, load it up some more. All right, my timer on my camera says the total amount of that footage is about 2 minutes, 37 seconds. So that's about 2 minutes-ish. All righty. Now I'll put the cap back on. Ooh. 
if you ever forget, SAE 530. Now, your knee jerk reaction is like, oh, let me check the dipstick. You don't. You're elevated and you just put the oil in. So make sure that you got nothing on top of your engine, nothing in the grooves. That can be deadly. Drop your hood and take the car off the ramp. Don't forget to remove your chalk. And then we'll wrap this up. All right, these next two parts are kind of two-handed things. So I'm gonna have to utilize a little mounted camera angling, but with this particular drip pan, it allows me the ability to pour my used oil back into the jug that I just used the clean oil from. So you're like, well, why is that important? Can't you just bring the drip pan? Well, you can, but you can see all the oil on the surface. That ends up having to get all over things, and it's, it's just a pain. By pouring it back in the container, you have a convenient way to bring it back to, for instance, Walmart that I to get it from, or your town usually has a, an oil reclaim service, which during this pandemic might be the way I go. So we're going to just pour as much of this oil in as we can, but we're not going to get all crazy about it. This pan holds more than five gallons. So if there's a few drips left over, not a big deal. So I'm going to wipe this out. I'm going to put all my tools back in there. And for those of you who missed it, on top of the engine while I was doing the inspection. Alrighty. Last thing, we're in the car. Your trip meter button is here. I have this bottom bar here lit or shown so you can see what's going on. To your left of that, and I got the camera balanced, is your maintenance light that should have come on saying you need an oil change. To get that to go off, you're gonna press and hold the key, the, the, the button in. See how the display comes on? You're gonna turn the key to on while holding it. See how the dashes go down? Keep holding it. Now you can let everything go. and that resets your oil change light. By crawling underneath, doing your own oil change, you can see if there's anything of concern. And you can either deal with it yourself or have someone take a look at it. So from beginning to end, I don't know how long the video is because I haven't mashed it together yet, but the oil change with all the instructional video setting things up and everything was about 55 minutes plus. It takes me about 10 minutes to get to Walmart, 10 minutes to get back plus shopping. So the whole thing took about just under two hours. If I cut out the video, I could probably get it down to about an hour and a half, give or take, if I included picking up my oil in my oil filter while I'm doing my grocery shopping, I could probably save myself that 30 minutes. So the whole oil change really should be under an hour. If you take it somewhere, they'll charge you more. Uh, most places are pretty reputable but they're gonna charge you labor, plus they're gonna charge you for the filter, plus for the oil, plus for the markup. However, you're not getting dirty. So, it's up to you. Um, I'd like to give you a cost, but I haven't tallied it all up, but I think it's like 22 bucks for the five gallons of oil in the big jug, and it's about $3.80 something cents for the filter. So, most places are gonna charge you like 50 bucks right off the bat. So if you're comfortable doing it, this is one of those vehicle maintenance things you can do. All right, till next time. All right, last but not least, you're gonna open up the hood again. And coming from the front of the engine to the left side here, you'll see a little yellow handle down there. That's your oil dip stick. I'm gonna try to prop the camera up. This could be great moments of video failure for my video, but should just have to pull that out and what I try to do is get a little of the oil rub it on this o-ring that's here 
That'll help it get in and out a lot easier. All right, then take your paper towel or cloth, clean it, and check your oil. You wanna give yourself at least five minutes, 10 minutes, let everything all settle. The longer, the better, up to like an hour. And then you're gonna check it. And if you look here, try to get the light on it. There's two, two little uh, dots. The bottom one is your low, the top one is your high, and you want it somewhere in between the two. And you can see I have oil going all the way down, so it's a little difficult to see where it is. That's because it's still draining into the oil pan. It's all over everything. So it's a little hard to check to see where we're at right now. But at the moment, my full is, top full is here, and we're just about an uh, eighth of an inch under that, which is high full, but not over full. 